It's been one month since we said goodbye to Dawnvale and began building the Inquisitor base. Look, there's no time for a lengthy intro today. I have so much to show you. I spent day one mining. I know, hold your shock. But look, it's better now because I'm mining with efficiency four. I don't have Unbreaking 3 on it, so I'm going to be burning through the durability quickly, but it's so nice and fast, I don't even really care. I don't feel like such a noob anymore. I'm so happy to be in month two now, and I already have the groundwork laid out. You know, I have a good pick, I have a mine, I have a farm. I think I'm ready to make some real progress building and laying out the city. We'll talk more about that later, but let's establish some goals for month two. Number one, I want to build buildings around the things that I already have set up. My mine, storage, enchanting setup. You know, I'd hate to be enchanting some of my diamond gear whenever a creeper comes up and, you know, wants to shake my hand. I'd like to begin the process of setting up some farmland. I'd like farmland to stretch from where I am now the entire way back to Dawnvale. It'll help flush out the land and help separate the city from, well, you know, the other city. And lastly, I'd like to connect this land to where the future Inquisitor City is going to be. I don't exactly know where that's going to be either, so we're going to have to look at that in a little bit. I have the optional goal of adding in some diamond gear. It'd be really nice to have full diamond gear, but I don't know if I have the enchanting levels or the ability to get enchanting levels to actually use it. I started the day off by farming my crops. You know, I'm actually good on crops for the most part right now. I just keep collecting seeds for my eventual epic farms, but since I don't have huge shields for now, I do need to keep an eye on things and just harvest whenever everything is grown. I made a new diamond pickaxe and I hit the jackpot. I enchanted a pick with my newfound diamonds that I got down mining and I got fortune three. Okay, cut the music. It's only fortune three. All right, I would have loved for Efficiency 4 or actually really Unbreaking 3, but look, I, I'm not going to look at Gift Force in the mouth. We got Fortune 3 pickaxe. That is huge. After a little more overnight mining, my Efficiency 4 pickaxe is just about shot. So I made an anvil and I used the levels, maybe foolishly, to combine my Fortune 3 and my Enchanting pickaxe. If I were a smarter man, which apparently... I'm not. I would have enchanted everything until I got under level 30, like level 29, and then combined them. But I'm not a smarter man, so honestly, I wasted some levels here. I could have enchanted like a sword or a shovel or even another pickaxe. Yeah, that, that would have been really a great idea. Good job, me. And then I compounded that by making an enchanted hoe. That seem odd? Look, let me tell you. In my old gear, I had two netherite hoes fully enchanted. One was Fortune 3 and one was Silk Touch. That is absolutely one of my short-term goals. It is huge for getting leaves off trees and getting saplings from those trees, especially some of the trees that don't really drop saplings as much like jungle trees or dark oak trees, both of which I plan to utilize quite a bit in this kingdom. This kingdom's going to be dark and dreary as far as the actual palette of the buildings goes, but I do plan on using a lot of lush sort of uh, greenery and nature and all that kind of stuff in it. It's not going to be just like a barren wasteland. That just doesn't make sense. I had a very successful overnight mining trip last night. Check out this stuff. I'm up to 42 diamonds, a whole bunch of copper and iron and all that stuff. Yeah, we are doing really great. This Fortune 3 pickaxe is really, really legitimately changing my Minecraft life. Super awesome. I used the rest of my copper that I've smelled up so far and worked a little bit more on the roof of my storage building. I really like this. Not every building is going to be copper, no, but I do like where we're going so far, and I think it's going to look really cool whenever it all turns green, and then we, maybe we have a few that aren't green. We'll, you know, we'll work on that texturing a little bit later, but yeah, I think it's going to look really, really cool. From my mining trip, I got up to level 32 and decided to spin the wheel of enchanting once again, and yeah, I got pretty lucky, actually, again. I got a Fortune 3 Efficiency 4 pickaxe, which, again, I'll take all the Fortune 3 pickaxes I can get my hands on right now. I'm going through them like crazy since I have no ability to repair my tools yet. I did a live stream, and I did like the next seven days live, which, by the way, if you want to check out my live streams, I stream on YouTube, and the best way to know when I go live is make sure that you have the bell hit, so that way whenever I go live, because I don't have a schedule, I kind of go unannounced, then you'll know, and you can hop in and visit with me while I do projects like this. We did a lot of terraforming today, starting the process of building the roads and the farmland that's going to sort of surround my little hut. Working underwater, you pretty much have to turn RTX off, unfortunately, and deal with the... Oh, well, you know, after you get used to RTX, it's kind of hard to go back. But you can see really far, and that's kind of cool. Look how far away the, uh, the city of Dawnvale is. 
it's going to be awesome to have all this connected by farmland. Speaking of farmland, I spent another day working on it, and yeah, we're getting there. Filling in all these little water holes and random sort of elevation changes and stuff. And, you know, it took some time to get all the gravel I can. And at some point, I kind of thought better. I was like, wait, there's lots of gravel underground. I can get it there. But, yeah, I just want to have a lot of gravel because I need a lot of coarse dirt in this world. On my third consecutive day of landscaping, I really think it's starting to come together. It's starting to have some nice gradual rolling hills. I don't want to have more than a one block elevation change. I think it looks, I don't know, typical Minecrafty kind of. Look, I'm a huge fan of roads being kind of low points in the land too. I like farmland to slope up from it. I think, and I correct me if I'm wrong here, I think this is how early roads were constructed, according to the best of my knowledge. The lowest point is where sort of the water has leveled the land, which makes for easy road building probably flash floods too, but let's go with easy road building. But the main reason why I like to have the roads at the lowest point in the land is so that you can look up and see farmland scrolling away on all sides of you. If you're at the highest point, you don't look down, you don't really see much, sort of the, it looks like you're on a ridge or the ground just sort of falls away from you. I got a new shovel with just silk touch on it, which is great. I can actually now combine my Efficiency 4 Unbreaking 3 Fortune 3 shovel with this new one and put Silk Touch on it. I don't want Fortune on a shovel yet. At some point, I will want that because it's a good way to get Flint, which you need Flint in Bedrock to get experience. It, I'll explain a lot more of that probably in Month 3, but yeah, at some point I will want a Fortune 3 shovel, but for right now, I'm really happy to have a Silk Touch one. So it's true then, you are an Inquisitor. Keep your voice down, son. If they find out I'm talking to you, we'll both be in deep, deep trouble. Why are you talking to me? For thousands of years, your council of events has taken this responsibility seriously. You've overachieved spectacularly in the mission we set out for you. Wait, the mission you set out for us? You're telling me the Inquisitors were behind the formation of the council? Of course. We are behind everything. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If this has to be a secret, why are we meeting here? Why in a crowded tavern? They wouldn't dare move against a council member in public, and I need you to hear what I have to say in its entirety. My source inside the council told me you have total recall. Is that true? Yes, I remember everything I've ever heard. My parents told me I was born for the job. Excellent. Listen well, I have a lot to say. I just about finished laying out the rest of the road. I mean, I still have a lot of path block and all that kind of stuff, but I, I really want to get this into a nice walk, at least to the water for now, and then start working on the farmland additionally. Thanks to my Fortune 3 mining, I actually have a stack of diamonds, so that's really, really nice. Unfortunately, maybe my plans to live stream and then download the live streams, I don't know, maybe I need to tweak them a little bit because unfortunately, the next three days after day 40, Got pretty blurry actually when I download the VOD. So regardless, you're not missing a lot. Basically I built this road and put in all the path block and got the road running the entire way from the oat water to the old sort of road that I had laid out at the end of season one. So now everything is all connected after day 43. But by day 44, I had actually made some real progress. I finished the roof of my very first house, my storage building. These roofs are going to take a lot. I'm going to need a drown farm soon. Maybe we'll look at that in month three, because I do think the drown farms are working a lot better now. I think you can get a lot more copper from them. But hey, check it out. I have an official copper roof for the first time. That's, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty psyched about that. I had a brilliant idea. I thought, hey, you know what would be great is if I don't do all my roofs out of copper, instead I'll do some of them out of warp. Because, you know, once copper turns sort of greenish, it's not that different from warped. Well, and then <laughs> I went to the nether, and it's combat time! Now, I took out the zombie pretty easy, but the problem is my nether spawn is, is pretty rough, and to figure out how to get to a warped forest inside the nether, yeah, that means I need to traverse a soul sand valley, and, well, that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Yeah, it was just terrible. I did manage to finally escape and I got lost and then eventually find my portal again, but I wasn't done. I wasn't gonna give up. 
I went into my Blackstone mine and followed for a very long way. Eventually, I accidentally intersected with my old Season 1 nether path, but just across the lava from it, and I had no idea this was there, honestly, but is a warp forest, and that is fantastic. I built a tiny little one block wide pillar the entire way across this big lava lake, which takes me fairly safely, assuming no gas come or skeletons to shoot me off of it, over to the warp forest, and yeah, I successfully made it. I've been playing Minecraft for a long time, for a whole bunch of years. You would think I would know this, but I thought, well, I have a silk touch shovel. I'll just break this mycelium with shovel and yeah, well, I got nothing. I got nothing. Shovels don't work on it at all, whether it's silk touch or not. And that stinks because my pickaxe is fortune. My shovel silk touch. So I have no way to collect this stuff. I really, really hoping I could bring some back after this long trip. But yeah, I just, I just had to tuck my toe between my legs and and head home. I have to admit, that was a very, very depressing walk home, because not only were you walking home with not the thing that I wanted after a very long walk to get there, but I knew I had to come back at some point, because I really do want the warp wood, so... Yeah, it was just a drag. But hey, you know what? I ventured out today because I had an idea. I want to kind of get a lay of the land. I, I don't know why I've been sticking so close to home. I know that I'm going to be trimming the chunks sort of on the outside of my area whenever 118 comes because I want to try to get some of the new mountains and certainly the new uh, lower ground, like the big caves and stuff, nearby. So I'm only going to keep what I have developed and trim everything else in this world. So I don't know why I'm sticking so close to home. I want to go and venture out and take a look around. I knew there was a taiga not too far away, and one of the main things I do want to get is I want to bring some spruce saplings home so they can start harvesting them. But while I was exploring it, look what I found! I found, unbelievably, another zombie village. Like, this is truly, truly unbelievable. So I fortuned up all the potatoes that I could find, and hallelujah, I got potatoes! That's amazing, my favorite early game food source. So now I'm living large, man. I have another zombie village that I get to play with in the future, it's very close to my base. I have potatoes now which is spectacular and I have spruce what a total victory what a pick me up after a very very depressing nether trip hooray I ended up spending the night in that zombie village because dusk came on me before I was quite ready and by the time I got home I was ready to harvest my crops again this is going to be awesome I'm actually getting a lot of pumpkins so that I can have a lot of jack-o'-lanterns so I can start to decorate my underground farm this could be really cool I love my jack-o'-lantern texture a lot Check it out, it's pretty great, right? I think it's really usable, it's really great, it's gonna be awesome once I get the walls detailed and everything. It's just gonna look really cool, it's gonna look like the Inquisitors. Eh, maybe they have some technology that they shouldn't because they are all anti-technology and stuff, but, you know, do as I say, not as I do, perhaps. I don't know, we'll get into the lore about that a little bit later. Hey, let's do some building, right? I finished off planting all my stuff and actually morning had broken, so I didn't sleep, but hey, you know what, this is awesome. Let's go build a bridge. I want to build something that's a little bit cooler than just a regular old straight bridge. So instead of go diagonal or exactly diagonal or straight, I went two blocks out and then one block over. So it's kind of whatever that angle is. I don't know. What would that be like? Like 30 degree angle or something? I don't know. Someone smarter than me. Tell me what that angle would be. But anyway, it, it works pretty well. So and then I went about five wide on the bridge and decided that I'm actually going to use wood. I don't want to use a lot of wood in this kingdom, but some things like a bridge or like floors and all that kind of stuff. I think that regular spruce or or any other wood really is just going to fit in really nicely and look cool. And yeah, I actually got this bridge right the first time. I kind of can't believe it. After finishing placing the blocks across, I jumped off to take a look at it and yeah, I actually love it. I can't believe it. I so rarely get an arc like this in a really good shape on the very first try. Like, rare to just about never. Yeah, good job, me. Great. I had a few more minutes left, so I used some of the spruce that I got and started the process of building up this sort of very random kind of ramshackle-looking bridge arc. And, yeah, it's proving a little bit more difficult because I do want to use trap doors because they look cool, and I like the little gap that you see down sort of underneath. But, um, but yeah, it does complicate matters a little bit because, you know, they can only go either the top or the bottom of a block. They can't go kind of in middle. So it just makes things a little bit more complicated, but I'll get it worked out. 
I had planted a bunch of 2x2 two two spruce trees, uh, partially to get spruce wood, but then also partially to get a bunch of podzol, because I do want to plant some fields, and one of the fields I want to plant is actually a flower field, and it's a lot better to have brown, either coarse dirt or podzol or something like that under the plants to make it look like a cultivated field and not just random grass from a distance. So yeah, it's a win-win, and I got a lot of spruce, but... While I'm chopping this down, why don't we go check out the other lore segment for the day, because I think our Inquisitor has more to say to our intrepid interviewer. This little fact may be hard for you to understand, but this world, Tovlin, was barren just a few years ago in the original timeline. Just a few years back, you and I and everyone you see never existed. Well, what are you talking about? Alternate timelines? No, no. Alternate timelines is a fairy tale. There is but one timeline, but it may not be as straight of a line as you imagine. There have always been rumors in the council that this world was created, but it's a fringe theory. Huh. <laughs> it's not fringe at all. It's the truth. I've seen the ship logs from the sheriff. The sheriff? You see, there were two ships flying orbit around this, at the time, uninhabited, rocky, lifeless world. They were performing an experiment. What the experiment was exactly has been lost to time. However, it was not what the crew of the ship thought it was. We, the Inquisitors, had infiltrated the crew and designed the experiment to create the Singularity. Why? What did the Singularity do? <laughs> in many ways, it was like a second Big Bang in the universe. We learned about the Big Bang in school, the moment everything was created. No. No, not everything. What do you mean? The Big Bang only managed to create life on but one small planet, original Earth. Throughout the rest of the nearly infinite planets, there was nothing. Not a single bacteria, not a plant, a blade of grass, or a living thing in all of existence. That is the thing that created our mission. You see, life could not be contained to one world. A runaway virus, a terrible war, an asteroid, a supernova, the list of things that could wipe intelligence from the face of the universe is nearly as long as the universe itself. We created the Singularity to change that. By the end of day 50 here, I got most of the wood laid out on the bridge, and I feel pretty good about it. I think it looks really nice. I'll, I'll show it here in just a minute, but I spent the rest of the day shearing leaves because I do want to have this a pretty overgrown kingdom. Not like unkempt or anything, but just a lot of lush stuff around. So I think we'll start with some lush stuff on the bridge. Also, that will help hide some of the sort of weird angles that we have to do because of this odd angle they chose to go across the river. Yeah, it's looking pretty sweet. I like the shape. I'm just sort of imagining all the lush stuff, vines and leaves and stuff that are going to be hanging from it. But yeah, it's pretty good. So I added in some fences and some lamps and yeah, first lanterns I've made in this kingdom as well. Boy, I thought I had a lot of iron, but you start crafting a few and you're like, eh, maybe not so much. With about eight days left this month, I think it's time to take stock in what I've accomplished and what I have yet to do for the month. So I've gotten Fortune 3 on a pick, that's amazing, I have a good supply of diamonds actually, almost a stack. I finished my first house, a storage hut, and established the style of this kingdom. It's gonna be great. I built a road the whole way to the bay and connected this area to the world, and just now, finished the bridge to my eventual Inquisitor City. Solid work in 21 days, to be honest, I'm pretty happy about it. So let's talk briefly here about what I want to accomplish in the last week or so left in this month. First, I'd like to build one of the other two houses, maybe both of them. I'd like to really start to make this area feel like a little town or a little hamlet. It'd be really nice. I want to get Silk Touch on a pick so I can start farming this warp wood. Yeah, I know that's a long journey out to the nether, but don't worry. You won't have to watch it. I'll just cut that for y'all. I have to do it, though. And I want to plant at least one field just to establish that, hey, this is a farming community. Crop fields make it feel real. It really enhances the immersion of the whole thing. That would be a pretty amazing accomplishment, to be honest, if I could actually get all that done in eight days. So I'm going to hustle and see how much I can get done. Unfortunately, I have two problems. My glorious Fortune 3 pickaxe is just about to break, and I don't have 30 levels yet. So I'm in the nether, and I hunted for all the quartz, thinking that might be the fastest way to get levels. But unfortunately, I came up just shy. 
So I actually came back with my unenchanted sort of first diamond pick that I had. And um, unfortunately, I got completely sidetracked by Blackstone and used up all the durability on it trying to get Blackstone because I need it for building. But really, I should have worried about levels first and Blackstone second, but I, I just can't stop myself, darn it. I returned to the overworld with 29 and a half levels and actually went and killed some of my cows, got up to 30, and I took a brand new pick to enchant it, and I got Locky, Unbreaking 3, Silk Touch 1, and Efficiency 4. Oh baby, it's party time! <laughs> I was so happy that I was just filled with joy the entire long, 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 long walk back to the warp forest in the nether, but who cares? You know what? I'm gonna get warped wood and, or mycelium or, I don't even, what is this stuff called? I have no idea. Anyway, well, I'm gonna get this green stuff and that is great because then I can bone meal and then I can get the warp trees to grow. Hooray, this is awesome. Until I get some real farms rolling, I actually have precious little bone meal, but I used what I had, I made some warp trees, and then I broke it all into slabs. I really think this is going to be a beautiful palette for this kingdom. It's going to play off the copper really well and give me just another texture I can work with. The final one of the month two goals that I really have is to set up a crop field. Look, I'd really love to plant the field right away, but I gotta landscape it first. The hills and things, it just looks too Minecrafty and not gradual enough. I want gradual slopes. I never want more than a one block jump up between elevation changes. Don't get me wrong, I'm not one for flattening things. I don't like anything to be flat in Minecraft. I think it's very boring, but I don't like these sort of weird three block high. If you're gonna make a cliff, then make a cliff. If you're gonna make a gradual hill, make a gradual hill. If you're gonna make it flat, make it flat. But these kind of weird two or three block high, that, that's just what loses me and sort of breaks the whole thing. I actually laid out the first of the fields today. It feels pretty good. I just took a bunch of cobblestone, slabs, stairs, you know, the usual thing and, and put up a perimeter. Looking back in time a little bit, I think I probably went awry here when I made the field very large. Look, that's going to be big in the big picture of things, but that's going to be very bad for getting this field planted before day 30, or 60, rather. 30 of the month. Well, you know what I'm saying. Before I really get to end the field, I need to stay on top of my underground farm crops, which I have not. Actually, I kind of let it go too long because I could have harvested probably a couple times. But regardless, I'll get what I can. You know, fortune does work on wheat, so I'm getting a whole bunch of seeds when I harvest this. But yeah, I need more underground farms. That's going to be a focus of an upcoming month soon, if not the next one, the one after that for sure. Okay, I, I will fully admit this field is very large. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was. I, I planted all day long and a good part of the next day and used up all the seeds I had. All the ones I just got, all the ones I had sort of saved up. And yeah, yeah, I didn't even really come close. But hey, while we're watching me plant some seeds, why don't we get to the question and comment of the day? Timothy Brushhaber says, this man needs to be in Hermitcraft Season 9. <laughs> I picked this comment because I want to talk about something else. Thank you. I understand the sentiment behind it. That's very, very, very kind. But listen, I have a big, a big announcement that I want to say. I got invited to a brand new SMP with a bunch of uh, YouTubers, a lot of which you probably know. I'm not totally sure what day that's releasing, but it's coming very, very soon. It is going to be absolutely different for my channel. It will be a complete other side of me that I am very, very excited to show. And plus, it's just going to be so much fun to hang out with my friends and meet a bunch of new friends as well. I can't wait. I'm super psyched about it. If you want to find out exactly more details and who's involved and stuff, follow my Twitter. It's at fixit412, two X's, two T's, spelled the same as my YouTube channel. Also, you can just see it right there on the screen, right there. Boom. Well, I finished most of my goals for month two. The only thing I came shy of is seeds. I really just didn't have enough. But you know what? I got the houses built. I got Silk Touch. I have Warp Wood. This is a big one. I got the bridge laid out. I mean, we are moving forward into the future. I am very much looking forward to uh, part three, month three, where I can actually do some farms, do some more infrastructure, and get resources that are more readily available to actually build more and more and more. We're gonna be upgrading a lot coming up very soon. I know progress is slow in the beginning, but you know, that's the early game grind. Don't worry, oh, this is gonna be a huge, epic, giant kingdom. We still have a lot of time left.
I really hope you are enjoying this series as much as I'm enjoying doing it. Oh my goodness, it is so much fun. I just can't wait to see what's coming next. I'll see you in month three of my year one year in Minecraft where there are a lot more builds coming. If there's any builds you'd like to see, leave it in comment down below and I'll do the best I can to get to any ideas that you may have. All the gold to your patron, your builds are coming too. I just need resources to actually make that happen, you know. I want to give a special shout out and acknowledgement to our friend, hey, it's Ori, who voiced our interviewer and has a lot more stuff coming up for the Council of Events. Oh, man. The story is going to be so good. I cannot wait for you to hear it. I know it's been a little bit of a slow roll up, but it needs to be. It needs time to simmer. But I have a 12 episode arc set up to tell us who the Inquisitors are, and I can't well, not wait to go through the story with y'all. Very, very special thank you to my patrons, my YouTube members, who make all the things I do possible on my channel. Love y'all, and I cannot tell you how grateful I am for all of your support over the months and years. Patrons and YouTube members get a world download at the end of every month of the series, and I'm going to have a world download for everybody at the end of the whole year, so don't worry, it's coming. Keep an eye out for the new SMP starting up with a bunch of large content creators. I cannot wait for you to meet everybody, and we're going to have so much fun shenanigans building. It's just going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's so much fun to actually start. It is called Imperial SMP. If you want to find out the list of everyone who's on it, just check the Twitter, at Imperial SMP. Thank you so much for all the support and the positive feedback on month number one. It just came out as I've been editing this video, and I can't wait for you to see this one and the ones after that. I'll see you next time. Love you all. Bye, everybody. I sat for a long time, listening to my new Inquisitor friend tell me, well, everything. His tale was too impossible to believe, and yet I did believe it. I returned to the Council of Events Guild that night and began to write. 